Hello, everybody. <laughs> I was talking to David and, and, and I was letting him know that when we feel nervous, it's also the same that feeling excited to show something beautiful about us. Right, David? Sure. Sure. How are you yeah. doing? I'm very well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, see, so if I were to ask you right now, what will make this the perfect environment, the perfect situation, the perfect um, conversation for you? Why would you say that we have succeeded? Um, if we had enough fun, while at work, and um, we're able to smile at the end of the thing, at the end of everything. I think it's enough to say this is success. Okay, so uh, I'm pressing, uh, let me put here uh, the people that probably will be here very soon and will be close to you. So, okay. in what ways do you have fun? Because if we're going to make these the perfect situation for you, we need to have fun. So what would be for you to have fun right now? Um, perhaps to play my guitar. Uh -huh. uh, to, you know, to talk about, um, talk about anything, basically. Let's just talk about everything, anything we want to do. So I, I, I want to ask you about something that caught my eye because I don't know what it is. And I would like okay. to ask you about that uh, on your profile that says that you are a psychoacoustic artist. What's that? Yes. Tell okay, me about Okay, so um, as a psychoacoustic um, person, what we do basically is we are sound engineer experts that um, has studied um, music very well. The in-depth of music, the physics of music, sound waves and the likes. And um, we can always apply that whenever we are mixing or making new tracks so that people can, um, we can make people um, flow according to our reading. We could, you know, make, make produce sounds to, to, to make the ambience quite um, romantic. Sometimes you can make it so um, dramatic, you get, you know. So it, it assists many of us whenever we are performing. So I could play a classical piece now and, you know, that same piece I express, um, I express anger. And in that same piece, I express happiness. So it depends on the way you use the notes, the, the, the brightness, the softness, you know, the volume of sounds and, and the likes. So, you know, I studied those, uh, those things very well when I started yes. music. And, and it was something that you came up with it? So um, it was something like, okay, I want to come. So it is actually creating an experience, right? Like music in itself, creating an experience, not only for the player, but the one who listen. And also mm -hmm. when the listening and the player are together, there's another experience as well. Yeah, right? yeah. yes, yes, you get it. So I, am, I, am I, okay, I don't know if you can listen to me play right now. My guitar is here. If you can, I would like to play a classical piece called La, um, Spanish Romance. It's a Spanish classical piece. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll play it in two different ways for people that, uh, understands classical guitar music performance well, they were able to detect the difference while playing those um, notes you get. Can you do it now? Yeah, yeah sure. That is so exciting. That is so exciting. Okay. Yeah, so this is... I gotta my... tell you, I gotta tell you a piece of information. I okay. am from Spain. You have what? I am from Spain. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's the magic, okay. right? That is the magic. That is the magic that I love about life. Wow. Wow. So I love this piece so much that, you know, 
I, I, I think I had it when I was very young and I began to trace the sound to know where exactly that music comes from. And I wasn't able to discover that until I finished my school, my, 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 until I finished school to get to know that it was, um, it's a classical piece called Spanish Romance. And so I had to just grab a copy and, you know, digest the notes. <laughs> and, you know, it makes more sense because it gives me this um, memory, like, um, gives me a refreshing memory about then when I used to listen to music a lot because it's been long. I love this. Okay, let, let me try. Okay. So that is the first phrase. So at the same time, I could play it in a different way. I missed it's fine. That. It's fine. It's fine. So, but um, it's the 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 it is the intention is different. The pieces uh -huh. that touches uh -huh. in, in me are different. So um, they create a completely different experience. Yes, yes, yes. So um I'll, I'm actually carrying guitar in the wrong way. So <laughs> I wasn't able to use my fingers very well. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is um, simply an example of what I'm saying. So that applies to mixing, applies to foley design, even in animation, because you have to do a lot of listening. You have to be um, aware about every sound and be very sensitive about sound. So, um, and uh, I think that is just the answer to what you mm -hmm. asked me. Yeah. So. It seems like you are really connected not only to sound and art, but you are really connected with life, right? Yeah. Where is Absolutely. where is where is that come from, David? Can I trace it? <laughs> okay. I think basically. Uh, I don't know how to answer this question. I, I I'm just me. I just I just I just leave me. I leave whatever comes out of me, whatever thing I'm doing, you know, I just want to connect everything together to make it reasonable to me first before I'm able to pass it down to every other person. So um uh, when I doing sound, drawing, and I'm painting myself. And that is why I'm always excited when I'm, when I'm doing my stops. Mm -hmm. I think that is the life. Yeah, because your, your, what I read about you, what I, the, why I connected with you, it is because there was something really deep in you, right? Like, even if you uh, wrote just a couple of sentences, they were really deep. They were really, they, there was something between the words. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think, and I think I told you before that, 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 um, that the way you, you write it is so deep. And now you play the guitar and I am like, Wow, so it, there is a connection there as well, 
right? That mm-hmm. has not really a lot of layers. And also that I see uh, your animation, right? And, and it's like, yeah. so I, I would like <laughs> us to to see your animation. I got to say okay. to everybody, you have a lot of, you have Victor here and you have Joy and... and Vic. <laughs> say hello to everybody. So hello. I just... Ken is here as well. So, uh, uh, and that remind me that because I invited Victor too, that remind me that um, you are an ambassador for the collective yes. artists. Yes, yeah. yes, and, yes. And I like to be uh, their partnership, being in partnership with them. You know, I think what they do and is absolutely beautiful. And awesome, awesome. Thank yeah, you. so it, it, before we get deep into that, let's go and, and see a little bit of your animation because I think it is okay. so powerful. I mean, because the, the music that you were playing, the writing that you are, the, the sensitivity that you bring to this conversation, if we see the, the trailer... It is going to be just amazing. So, um, because explain we it everything. So let me try to share this. Uh, I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, and uh, okay, uh, let's uh, share for a second. Hmm. This one. Share. Are you seeing it? I want to tell you this story. I know. Somewhere in Hoffa, there lived a young girl, a princess. That is amazing. Let me uh, stop there. Uh, I hope it's started. Hold on, because it's making noise. Just give me one second. Just to stop this for a second. That's it. Okay. Now we are here again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, David, tell me about this powerful, powerful, I I want to see it, you know, the, the whole thing, the whole movie. Uh, you did this with Blender, right? Yeah, 100% Blender. Ah, love it, love it. Okay. Uh, but tell me a little bit of this powerful image, message. And I want to start with, hello, tell me the meaning of that. Okay, okay. Um... We, um, Aroba Animation, you know, when we started Aroba Animation, um, we want to pass a message to the world. We want the world to know that um, Africans, you know, we, we are also good at telling our stories because our, our stories are getting, you know, it's fading away gradually. And um, this is because um, the animation industry are not doing much to, you know, to, to produce African content. And um, of course, some of them try, but they can't do it like the blacks. To the industry, we discovered okay, creating 3D animation in movies is quite expensive. Mm-hmm. People to make it work out. So then I, I 
a friend of mine, Faith, the co-founder of Urban Mission, you know, we've been friends for um, over three years in school. And then we're always painting, you know, we, we work together as artists and um, we got talking a day and then we discovered that, okay, we could make a difference if we can um, strategically reduce the process of telling our stories in 3D animation movies by mm -hmm. um, doing more than 10 things. So we ensure that one person is able to, to, you know, to specialize and do more than over 10 things at the same time in the movie you get. So as to know to have an MVP to show, to prove to the world that we are capable of doing this. So that was the reason why we started with Morimi. Uh, because uh, along the way, along the journey, we, we, we decided to reach out to some investors. And um, of course, as an artist, you can't convince me if you don't have an ex a, a, a practical example or um, maybe a few of your hard works that I can see to prove that you are good at what you do. And um, having a test sample for 3D animation movie is quite expensive. So we, we began drilling ourselves and then, you know, we, we want to be sure that we are ready for this um, tough, let me say tough journey, because it is tough. And um, he kept on working in the 3D animation work, like was so vast. Then I began to pick the sound aspect because um, for every of the um, scene, we need um, a type of message that can, you know, that can, can make people relate with Africa at the same time. Um, many other people outside the African diaspora can also relate because um, this is who we are and uh, we want to be natural as possible. Okay? So I had to just um, ensure that I undo the sound aspect, you get just monitor the, the three dimension aspect, you know, direct and then faith guides few animators and then it works on almost everything in the animation um, um, category you know we, we have to do animation is quite broad from sculpting rigging weight painting simulation all those things so it's is is really doing well at those things and i commend him for that that's why he's always my best partner and um after that um we picked morini we started with green leaf inside that particular youtube channel you'd see green leaf green green leaf was um was a movie we intend to produce to connect all Africans you get. We want almost every African country to come and join us in that movie. And, you know, it's called Green Leaf, the Rise of Hero. So we want to do something like the Wakanda, and it's going to go for over one hour, 30 minutes. Quite expensive. We have the story written, storyboard prepared, and we are only able to further because of funds. So then we decided to just do the small story, Morimi, you get, because the story is also fading away. This woman is a very great woman. She's a legend those days. And then she sacrificed her only son, you know, unconsciously. She, but you no, know, so as to, to obey the gods, she had to just do that. And um, that was her only son. And um, that was all she had after the battle. And um, we had to just do that for her. And also, you know, communicate to the world that we have to give the girl child the privilege, the chance you know, to take up some roles because we have legends, we have women that have done, um, um, they, they've, they've, they've created history, they've helped us along the way. So let's give them voice. Let the women also, you know, be empowered. So um, that was the reason why we chose that. And while producing the movie, we decided, okay, I want to ensure that we, every of our wordings, the way we speak is quite natural. We are not forming it. Are not pretending to be what we are not. So we were putting indigenous language like our law. I love that. Um, explain it. Explain it. But everybody so to our, know what that means. Yeah. So our law is um uh, is it simply means once upon a time in Yoruba. So it's um it's it is to alert people to make the children excited. It is um it's more like um ringing a bell for everybody to gather, you get. So once I say our law, um, everybody's ear is up. We want to listen. Wow, what's up? Then, <laughs> then the man says, those days, our, our, our forefathers had the time to, you know, to sit us down and tell us stories, share their experience with us, 
which in a way helped them those days. Unlike now when many of our children stick to their phones and they don't know anything, they, have no, they don't have any, um, uh, um, they can't relate with the culture anymore because they've been taken away by tech, they've been taken away by, uh, by, by religious activities and, and the likes. And then we begin to lose uh, the roots where we come from. So um, that was why we used our law. And in that movie, we used so many more contents like, um, like, oh, look, oh, that sound is funny, you get. But that sound is what they use in the olden days. So as not to, you know, you don't miss your track. It's more like the Google map we use now. So those days when they do those sound, when you make those sound, those high pitch sound, it's just to protect yourself so that hunters won't shoot you in case you, 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 you miss your path in the bush. You know, all those informations are quite quite um quite um informative and important for us but then we are losing many of those things it's fading away gradually so we used many of all those content in morini and um even aroba animation aroba means folklore in english which means storytelling so aroba is intentional you get so because we we want to tell stories we want to tell african stories so that's that's, that's yeah that is so good. You know, like I, I learn about Hello, I learned it from one of the, my favorite persons in the world, <laughs> favorite wow. human in the world. Wow. His name is, I don't know if you know him, probably. If he's not, I will encourage you to look for him. His name is Bayo Akolafe. Uh, Bayo Akolafe, right? Akomolafe. Akomolafe, yes, I know him. I know him. Uh, <laughs> he is just, he completely changed my life a couple of years ago, you know, like, wow. uh, and I got really, really wow. interested in even wow. more, you know, in everything. Um, so when I heard that in, in, the, in the trailer, I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. you know, like, a, it is like a, there's a calling from the earth. It's a calling for listen to the stories. It's a calling mm -hmm. to to, mm -hmm. to get connected. <laughs> we are already right, like but 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 uh, you just go deeper in in all of that, you know, and allowing everything that happened to put it in the table, and allow that thing to move us and change us, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that you do that really good with your writing and with your 3D animation, with the stories you tell, with the music you play, you know, like uh, I, I can feel how you are like just doing this, you know, like um, connecting and connecting and connecting. And, and that's why I wanted to talk to you, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So one more thing before we connect with uh, Victor that I see right now mm -hmm. that I have here. I oh, want to tell the story because I have something to tell you. I don't know if you know this, but I will let you know. So the okay. story of Benin. Okay. The kingdom, the kingdom of Benin. Oh, you want me to tell you the story of the kingdom of Benin? A little bit, a little bit. What happened? And, and tell the story that the, the, the bronze art uh, artifacts are coming back to, to Africa? Um, just in a brief, because I, I, I'm, I'm, more of, I'm more of a writer than a talker. I'm just trying to, you know, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to learn to improve myself in this. So um, briefly, Benin Kingdom happened to be one of the greatest kingdom in, you know, um, not just in Nigeria, in Africa. And um, they have a very large territory from Lagos. They have massive lands, even at Lagos, you know, linked to Jesha, to different parts of Nigeria. And um, they happen to, 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 to have learned a lot. Like, they are smart people, smart set of people that, uh, the reason I said they are smart is because they are quite advanced than many other people in the mm -hmm. country and you know, they develop their own weapons and uh, often time when um, um, when when they are being attacked you get for slavery and the likes they 
they defend themselves so well and they have their own strategies and the gods are also always supporting them according to history. And, um, um, you know, the king of um, Benin has this necklace that, you know, simply tells, tells him what your intention is. So when you come to him to, to give him an advice or to assist him or to help him out, it's still going to double check. So this necklace is always around him and, you know, it tells him, everything that is in your mind. So most of the time they don't go wrong with their decisions. And, um, but unfortunately, you know, they, uh, they were looted, they were looted. And some of their, um, their bronzes were stolen and, you know, wasn't returned. And um, the, the, the truth is many of these bronzes, these artifacts happen to be um, a good part of them because uh, that's that was their major work. That was what they do. So, so which simply means if I have a child, if I were to be in the past, my child will will, will carve my story. Will carve. Will, will make a bronze. Will make artifacts about my story. So when he has children, they do that for him too. So in a way, when we, they have lots of that in their own um, custody. And they use it to trace their generation. So before they got muted. And um, this is the reason why many of them really want to have it back. So as to know where they belong to, where they belong, who made these, you know, to trace themselves. And um, I think that is just um, a short story about it. It's quite complicated than that. And, uh, uh -huh. But the... the, the um, those bronze were... Uh robbed right for for from from the the benin from from the kingdom and they were at the british museum and it, they were in the hands of very private a, a lot of private people mm -hmm. right that uh, mm -hmm. and they still are there mm -hmm. and what i'm missing it is i don't know if you know that you know what i'm going to tell you there's a story that it was written i haven't here written down because i wanted to tell you um by Killian Fox. You know, Killian Fox is a journalist from The mm -hmm. Economist. And he wrote in The Economist, in The Economist, okay. and I have it here, um, an article that says, Are ghosts haunting the British Museum? And it's, it, what mm -hmm. happened is that when the, these uh, artifacts, bronze artifacts that they were at the British Museum, Weird things were starting to happen, you know, at some point mm. that the lights mm. went off, the things, uh, you know, like a, the change in the temperature, mm. and everything. in a way, it seems like weird, but actually, is written, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. um, yeah, this journalist knew about this, and when I saw that they were sending back uh, the artifacts, I was like. That is so good. They want to come back home. They will do anything to go back home. <laughs> go back home. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Yes. I will wow. pass it to you. And actually, I'm going to put it in, in, if I can. I'm not sure if I can put it in here, but I'm going to put it here for people to take a look at it because they can. Yeah, I think okay. so. Let me take a look. Yeah, that's the wow. um, the article. That's the article yeah. in which um, it talks about how these uh, artifacts uh, were causing these weird things in the British mm. Museum. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Mm. So let's invite Victor. Then I'm looking forward to talk to him. That has been for a while. We were talking a lot, and then all of a sudden he got super busy, and I didn't talk to him anymore. <laughs> hey, man! Unmute <laughs> yourself, Victor. Unmute yourself. David, Yolanda, how are you? Good oh, morning, fine. good afternoon. Fine to see you. <laughs> How's everybody doing? How are you doing, Yolanda? How are you? I'm doing really good. Actually, I was looking so forward to talk to David. You know, like I, there's a, I feel like this amazing connection with him. Like, same like you, you know, like I remember the first time I connected with you, I connected the same way I connected with David, with Ashe, right? And, <laughs> yes. and 
Um, yeah, so the three of us here, we have something that connects us. <laughs> yes, yes. No, that's what that's is that's one like one of like when you ask him what is your connection with life, what inspire you. So I make a comment on LinkedIn. Uh, it's same same connection, David and me and Faith. Also, he have been having is an ancestor connection. Is something uh -huh. way before times, so yeah. it is something different that it something made to be happen and it happened for a reason and maybe it was happening in the other in the past, you know. So uh, we have a same a similar a belief, a spiritual belief. So mm -hmm. I think that's what one of the most strongest bond David and me were having, you know, mm -hmm. and same, you know, um, every like like you was asking about the the kingdom of of Benin, um, everything is start after the war, all that revolution, it became part of the spirituality, like the first Oba of the kingdom or you have mm -hmm. the great one of the greatest Oba or Dudua. So you have many different characters in the history that they became gods, they became entities and it last, have been lasting forever. So you see to the point that they scaring people in the museum. So they got yeah, to no, I was sorry. I was like, imagine the power, right? Correct. There's, something, there's something that we cannot touch that is um, powerful. You know, it's yeah. so powerful. And, and it gives and me then, goosebumps talking to you too. No, and, and you have uh, other, in other culture, other tribes in Africa, you have the same situation. I'll give you an example. Uh, that situation, right? Because mm -hmm. the the ancestor want to go back to the place they belong, right? Mm -hmm. But you have, I'll give you an example, in a different tribe, like a Baule tribe from Ivory Coast, it's West Coast also, you have the fertility figures and the Ripley Museum they travel those pieces all over the world because when the woman cannot have baby, when the woman can go to the doctor, there's no more solution, no other solution. They go to the statue, they rub the belly, and they have a baby. And it's in the World Recon Ripley Museum. So I will share the link a little bit later so you can okay. see. So. Uh, it, it comes from the energy of the ancestors that they still here, they still with us. And I yeah. always say it's like the Wi Fi, you don't see them, but you connect your phone with the router, <laughs> yeah. you don't see the wire. So it's the yeah. same. And Aroba Animation is creating so much beautiful content with their stories. Yeah. to not only show African people, to show to the world. Because what... it's the story of the world, right? Yes. It, is, it is the story of the world. Yes, yes. It's, 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 it's a culture that it has been disrupted by movies, by media, that uh, that's why, you know, we're working together to show the reality to show culture and to don't let technology to put a shadow in what happened in the past in histories because what intrigued me more and one of the things I like more about African spirituality and African teaching is that you learn from the uh, for, from the elder he's your teacher you see, he sit down, everybody sit down, and he talk. There was no book. So that's the real teaching. And he talk his story. He, he told you how he hunt the lion. 
how what mm -hmm. happened with the elephant maybe the stories it sometimes became more disrupted like when you play in the school the game of the gossip that you said something to the first one and the guy the hundred have a different story but mm -hmm. but it's an essence there and mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is to recoup all that essence and to expose it to the world yeah that's and an Aroba Animation is making a really, really good job. Uh, David and Faye, they have a very, very good team uh, that uh, African community should be really proud, really proud of them. David, what, what is um, uh, your mission at becoming an ambassador for the Artist Collective? My mission? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's simply to you know to 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 spread this this good news to preserve our um our, our cultural heritage and then you know to make arts and music um something um you know let's, let's just expose it to our kids to people because they don't have access to it. So basically my mission is just to um, to expose and preserve vital information, vital African stories, you know, and also, you know, bring, selectively bring in people with the right mind, people who are willing to join us in this mission, to, you know, to, to, to preserve our cultural heritage. And this will make it quite easy for everybody to trace back their, their, their self, to, to know where they belong, to know uh, their roots. So, so that is, that is, that is it. Yes. No. And and we we are in the artist collecting a collective. We um we gonna create the movie theater. We create sure. uh, all the the pieces that will come in NFT soundtrack. It's it's a surprise, but we're preparing yeah. something really 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 beautiful, uh -huh. very very cultural, because mm -hmm. that's the essence that we wanna keep. We wanna keep. You know, we know that everything and a lot of people look Web3 as futuristic, but Aroba Animation and the Artist Collective want to preserve culture. We're going to use mm -hmm. the technology to preserve culture. Mm -hmm. and, and what is the impact that um, the technology, when I say technology in this case, I'm not talking about only about... Um, uh, animation in this case, or music, right? Because those are palpable things uh, that can be even displayed in a, in a theater or in the middle of the street, right? What is the impact that this new um, level of experience, if you will, is uh, like NFTs in the blockchain, Web3, how is that impact in Africa? David, how how is that translated or brought to Africa? Okay, if I get you well now, the question is how do how are we connecting our music, our hats, our NFTs, and the likes um, using technology? How are we using it? How does that relate with Africa, right? Uh -huh. So how is um, Africa receiving this, right? How is streaming through africa how is this streaming through I, what I i'm saying that. what i'm trying to say I, I, okay let me clear out there so all this technology so you mm -hmm. you got to this technology being in africa so how is that distributed distributed to your people to how they can participate in this okay how, how they can access it right how can they access our music and hearts, our, our, our works and the likes through the technology? We are, we are going to have a community. We are building a community. And then these people, people will get to, you know, have access to it easily because the ease is very important. And then um, when they come there, we ensure that, you know, they have a voice. They are given voice so that they can, you know, they can also state whatever they want to know whatever they, they, they feel like knowing about themselves, about some other ancestors, about um, 
African stories. So a voice will be given to them such that our survey and our research too will be will be intact. So whenever we are creating our NFTs, whenever we are when we open the cinema, we are we are there to show them what they really want and also ensure that by exposing that to them, we are we are preserving vital information because that whatever is in the space is right in the space. And any more any every new members can always get back to check for themselves. So that is one of the um, the reasons why we are using this technology to you know to keep our hearts and um, our unique uh, musics. I'm so the impact. You. So the yeah. impact that you are. Uh, sorry, Victor. Uh, just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, so the impact you see in the impact in them in the community because of all yes. of this. That's yes, what yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. The impact. You no. Know, to, to, they, they were able to, you know, to some people don't have the confidence to say I belong to Africa because they don't know where they really belong. They get so to some people they will they will be confident enough to to know where they belong to. To some people, uh, they, will, they will they will be exposed. They will know more. They will know more about themselves if they had if they know themselves before. And to some people, they will be able to relate when. Other people are talking. They're able to relate that. Oh, I know about this. I know about this. So the the uh, this is in a way this in a way we just make um, African social life um, more exposed, the history more exposed to people. And then, and um, basically, the summary of everything is that the stories that are fading away will be intact. Perfect. So you're creating that legacy, basically. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. or helping to create this policy. Victor, yeah. yeah. Victor, you want to say something? Yeah, I think I think it's, in my opinion, it's like a two-blade knife where technology is doing something positive, but at mm -hmm. the same time is creating something negative. So, example, in cultural heritage, you have the kids learning how to carve, from grandpa, from dad. That's why you have this style or this mm -hmm. type of carving. But now kids wake up and they got a phone. They look, they don't know how to carve. So you need to have a balance between what technology is capable of to do and what you using for help. Like example, one of the biggest example in Nigeria it was with the money currency because of crypto and technology nigeria was able to balance the monetary situation that was ha happening in nigeria so technology was in favor of on that it's in favor to spread the world the word of the mm -hmm. culture but is i think we have to have a balance between technology and other skills that technology is substituting but like this skill is part of our culture. So, and it's not only happening in Africa, it's different around yeah. the and world. And how, how the artist collective um, take to heart that, Victor? Take to heart, like, how can we create, how can we walk in that balance, right? How can we walk, how can we preserve, how can we keep, creating a uh, keeping the legacy as being the guardians of the legacy right so one and of, also bring the technology with it so one of the our goal on the artist collective is to open physical workshops because as you know we are very strong in digital I have 20 years of experience of buying and selling African art. I used to have galleries, uh, online, eBay, 4,000 positive feedback plus used to sell to collectors all around the world. So I know the true value of NFT is the authenticity for the piece. So I see the NFT as a different way, like me, most of the people because I'm coming from traditional art. How you preserve it? Giving work tools to kids to come back and carve mm -hmm. instead of being in the iPhone or being in the cell phone. 
So mm -hmm. providing those resources, I think we can have a balance between technology and traditional arts. So, you know, that's yeah. one of our, our intention on the Artist Collective. Uh, I can't tell you much, but that's <laughs> one of... It's okay, but for me, that is so important, you know, because uh, I think one of the biggest values of NFTs for me is the sense of community, the sense of collaboration, the sense mm. of having a purpose or having a vision or having an idea and, and create the, ne the necessary resources for that to happen. And yes. the, uh, the utilities of that is long and great and amazing. And yet what you just said, I just love it. How to create physical spaces, right? For worship, for con real connection that is not only mm -hmm. online, right? Because mm -hmm. I still miss human connection, like real. I want to know you and give you a hug. You know, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's, yes. like, it's exactly, um, we cannot, forget about that part you know no, so i no. think nft is also is a great opportunity to create um the connection on the web three is the special the, places you know yes. special places and where people can go and know everything about that place and know that it's safe that you know that it, anything can be can be done there yes. right because yes. so it, it, it is also a place that accept everybody you know and and, and that the, way, the way you connect the people i'll give you an example i entered to uh, you know the sunday space uh, and then i know john ole he's from nigeria he's a very good singer and you how he's how happy. he's so happy i love that <laughs> so so how how web three work you see he connected with me i connected with david and i connect both of them they was in nigeria but they did, never knew each other so that's how web three and this nft world can make easy connections now john is gonna make a music in david's studio or maybe david and john do a collaboration so he, this web three, and this, I, I call them this, this web that it make everybody connected and I'm happy for it. You know, mm -hmm. now they're going to see each other. They're going to work together. Who, co who know how, you know. That is they, expansion. That is expansion. Yes. Right. Yes. Is, next uh, year, next year, I'll, I'll expect both of them to see them in NFT NYC so they can be with me talking about culture. And, and that is one of the things that I love the most about the Artist Collective, right? It is um, there's a deep thing there that I cannot fully touch, but it's very human. It is really uh, open to the magic of the ancestral world, the magic of the technology. And so it's kind of like creating this new kind of even human, right? <laughs> when we think about it, when we put everything together. And I am hopeful for that, you know, because I, it is one of the places that I feel the community the most for me. Yeah, you know, we, that, we, we, we give the, we give the comfort to the, to the artist, like uh, David can tell him, I can tell you, I told him, you create movies, you create your art, we take care of the rest. That way, the artist don't have that stress. I need to do. I need to do my, my my promotion. I need to be chilling my project. Oh my god! I need to be two three hours. Yeah. Cherry, cherry. So it's, <laughs> then the artist because you got you, that you don't understand, Yolanda. The artist they do the work with the passion. So if they are not concentrated, if they not connected, because they need to think. Oh, I gotta be tweeting oh i have to be uh, running to here or run. no they know so when they feel that comfort that okay i have somebody helping me out in this i can connect and create art yeah. so when you are a really truly artist that that's your passion you concentrate in that if you are a money grabber and you are in the nft 
it's the same. Remember, Yolanda, NFT is not new. This art thing of I know. if you study art, traditional art already have all the experience NFT. You want to know what's going to come next in NFT? Check what happened in traditional art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so when the artists have that connection and don't have nothing else to think because somebody is helping them out to take care of it, they can create wonderful, wonderful. And also, if you add to that what you were saying, you know, like creating spaces for workshops and creating spaces to um, to even communicate, right? The communicate yeah. seems like, uh, that, I think we talked about this before, uh, privately, I guess, or, or in another in another session of this, um, of our failures, of our horror, of our, you know, like we have, if we have those spaces in which art can come up from that, those places, um, and you don't have to check the, the the social media because what is marketing and branding and all of that can be taken care of. Um, I don't know. It will bring can bring uh, something new, and oh, I, yeah. I am interested in that new. You know, no, the, everything is a process, and we just gotta go with the flow, but the smart way. And right now. Is a moment where, where it's a shaking. Mm. The people mm. that is creating from the heart, that's the people gonna survive and they gonna be good when the market goes. That, that happened in traditional art the same, right? Yes. Happening yes. in traditional art the same. Yes. And right now people don't understand that if you check all the economic, you know, all the stats, gold art silver so if you want to put save your money you buy a very good piece of art and your money is going to be protected from this situation that we have of inflation and, and, and no financial gonna... advice but it's a form of protect your it's an asset that's what people don't understand art is an asset so i rather have African art than have the money cash. Because if I used to have money cash, then I would be losing a lot of money in this inflation. <laughs> so art is one of I, the I best ways. This inflation is good. If I if I look at it from another place, it's, it's like good. It's like good because it's kind of like kicking ass in the butt, right? Like, like okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and digital want, art. What is what you really want? And what is your true intention in the world? What is your intention with your life? So I think it's good. I, I think um only good things can come from these, you know, only can get better, I think. No, okay, I guys. Uh the... anything else that we need to know before we leave this conversation? Because it's already one hour. I cannot believe it. <laughs> No, so you soon you will see Aroba animation in educative because educational workshop we're gonna have a, that's our focus spread the word mm -hmm. to schools to kids because they are the ones that need this cultural education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, David? Yeah. Sure, sure, yes. Yeah. David, I love having you here. Thank you. Thank you so much for all that you bring, you know, your... What time is over there, David? Uh, six, 6.54. That is a um, few minutes to 7 p.m. Okay. So that's good. Nice. And for you, Victor? For what me, it's 1.54. And for me, it's 10.54. I love it. <laughs> Is that, in that space that there is no time or space, right? No time no. or space. We are in a yeah. different realm. A pleasure to have you both here. Um, we'll have more next week. And I got to say that Joshua, I love Joshua. I only know him through LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. I love uh, having him here because he's the biggest supporter of every single artist I've ever seen. 
<laughs> and he said, I, just for you, David, for you to know, he said, I would love to see animated stories of Anansi in particular. Okay, of Anansi, right? Uh -huh. Hey, I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is really good. Cool. Victor, There's thank you so many much. stories. Many what? stories. Yeah, many from... stories. We can make yeah. anything happen. We can make many. anything happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for, thank you for having us. Of course. And any artists you have, any artists that that is, you think uh, needs to be here, just send it my way, and we create the space for having more and more and more of this. You said a lot of artists. Don't worry. That's I know. I know. <laughs> That's the beauty. That's the beauty of LinkedIn. I am. No, but. Sure. Next time you next time okay I'll tell you then what we because we, so no, we next time next next Saturday we have Fernanda with us okay no no but I would like to coordinate one with Faith and uh, David and a surprise we're gonna have for you right David <laughs> <laughs> yes sure we're gonna have a surprise, have a surprise for, you, for you I love surprises I love surprises. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't mind. I love the darkness. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna okay, be guys. What a so pleasure. Happy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, Bye -bye. for being here. Friends have been here. Uh, Joy Osunyomi has been here for you, David. I just for you to know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.